It's time now for Countywide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Kyle Benedict as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives in Yavapai County. And now here's today's Countywide. Welcome to Countywide. I'm Paul David. Great to have you in the studio today. We're going to continue our program about the homelessness issue in Cottonwood, as well as the, I guess, the process in which we're trying to deal with the homelessness in the Verde Valley. So our guest today is Spectrum Healthcare CEO April Razzo. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. And then Cottonwood Police Chief Steve Gazelle back in the studio. Welcome back. Thank you. Is this our final installment, or do we have one or two more? We'll probably come up with something else. Okay. All right. But this is kind of the, I think, the final link, and we've talked about it throughout the series, is the mental health issues mm -hmm. and the substance abuse issues and that's where you yes. come in play yes can you tell us a little bit about spectrum healthcare sure um, well spectrum healthcare is a whole health care facility that that offers um, to meet the health care needs for both physical and mental health for community members in the Verde Valley and so we aim to serve a broad range you know anywhere from primary care needs to phlebotomy to pharmacy as well as any sort of outpatient behavioral health services to all Verde Valley community members. Okay, all right. What is this, what is Spectrum's role in, in your program? Well, Spectrum offers a very um, important resource for law enforcement or policing in general and I think um, as we evolve in our respective crafts or professions that relationship has become tighter out of necessity and there's a you know a number of variables I think um, I can say from an anecdotal standpoint starting my career in 1989 in policing the number of calls involving mental health that I would hear over the the police radio has increased exponentially I'd agree with that things have changed a lot haven't they I've been doing this for 23 years and I remember back in the day you never heard about this right and it is almost all the time now. You know, and one phrase that I would hear dispatchers <coughs> say, and the first first phrase that caught my attention on the radio is, subject is off their medication. And I would start hearing over and over and over and over and over and over again, and it, it obviously hasn't stopped, it's gotten worse. Self-medicating too, I hear a lot now. That yeah. they're not on medication, but they're self-medicating. You could probably address that a lot. Yes, I mean, that's an, that's an important point as well, and it, it leads directly into what we're trying to accomplish here because with the homelessness problem, oftentimes, well, actually a third of people that are homeless are living with some sort of mental illness, sometimes diagnosed, sometimes undiagnosed. Um, people are unable to access their medications for whatever reason or have never been on medication, and so then often turn to substance use as a means of feeling better, essentially. Um, and then in other cases, you know, substance use may precede the mental illness or maybe there may be a substance-induced mental illness that goes untreated and people are often unable to care for their most basic needs, such as housing or, um, you know, maintaining full-time employment, things of that nature. So those are the, the people that often find their way in through our doors and, and we help address that problem with hooking them into services that are that are needed to get them back on their feet. Mm -hmm. And then speaking to the, you know, the law enforcement end of it, we've certainly seen, I think the nation's becoming more and more aware that mental illness is being addressed in the streets by law enforcement and that the jails are often the, the treatment facility for mentally ill people, which is the least um, appropriate place for them to be, obviously. I mean, it's not a therapeutic environment by any means, as you can imagine, and so we're really aiming to, to help them every step of the way. Spectrum has a mobile crisis unit that responds to the community, to law enforcement calls as they're happening to hopefully keep them from going to jail in the first place. And then once they do end up in jail, if that happens, then we're able to come in on our post-arrest jail diversion program with the city of Cottonwood, where we can help give them an alternative to continuing to get in trouble with the law. So, so we're trying to approach it from a lot of different areas. You know, I think April touched on um, really the core of the issue is the, the justice system has become the de facto mechanism to address mental illness, which is ill-equipped to do so, and the, the jails, and that, that would be another um, installment of this series that we'd love to bring here, is what the county has been working on inside our county jails to just do just that, is reduce that institution's um, function as a de facto mental institution. 
So that's not working. This plan's not working, the current one that we have in place. It's only getting worse. I mean, from, again, through, through our eyes and, and police work, uh, like I said, throughout the, the 26, 27 years I've been in the business, just through my eyes, it's, it's gotten much worse. And, and certainly it's, um, you know, it varies in different areas of the country. As you know, I just came back from the central coast of California where it's an epidemic there. It's, it's um, beyond a crisis. Okay. So you had an analogy, and we'll lead into that a little bit. Sure. Okay. Um, your police officers are dealing with this all the time. Yes. Face to face with mental illness, substance abuse, where the person they're dealing with might not exactly know what's going on at the moment. So that's a huge change. How does the police force deal with that? And have they been dealing with that? Well, the traditional way of interfacing with the mentally ill was a, a police recruit would, would get, or a cadet, whatever they're called in the police academy, would get a small block of instruction on interfacing with the mentally ill. And I can tell you, I can't even remember what was taught to me in my, my uh, academy class, because it was so long ago. But certainly not the education we want to arm our police officers with. Um, that sense evolved again out of necessity and quite frankly responding to the increase in mental illness throughout the country. We now have um, a course called uh, CIT, Crisis Intervention Training. And that in my eyes is an absolute m mandatory um, exposure for or process for all of our officers to go through and this is ongoing um, in-service training. So it's a very lengthy course but it's worth the investment. Doesn't make people, um, doesn't bring them certainly to anywhere near the qualifications that April or her um, crew has, but it at a minimum gives them some basic tools to hopefully diffuse the situation safely. And these are very, you know, and I'll, we'll go into that analogy to try to, to uh, share with the public exactly what that's like for a police officer, but certainly it's very precarious. Any tool that we can arm our police officers with to save a life, we, we want to do that, including mm -hmm. their own. Let's take our first break. Let's take our first break. We're there right now. Uh, Spectrum Healthcare CEO April Razzo in studio today along with Cottonwood Police Chief Steve Gazelle. This is Countywide. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. I should be fine. You should be. Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. I'm Jenny Garth. And as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. want to remind you bacteria can hide in food and make you ill wow but you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps clean i'm waiting for the rain cycle separate <laughs> cook and chill we chipmunks are notoriously tight check your steps the road chip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov Welcome back to Countywide. Spectrum Healthcare CEO April Razzo in studio along with Cottonwood Police Chief Steve Gazelle. Uh, Cottonwood Police Department 634-4246. Mm -hmm. And then for 
the uh, Spectrum Healthcare 634-2236. We wanted to make sure we talked about the mobile crisis unit, and that's something new yes. for Spectrum. Tell us about that. Um, so the mobile crisis uh, response to law enforcement calls in the community is a pilot program that uh, we launched February 1st in partnership with, it's a quite a large collaboration um, for the Verde Valley, so Eastern Yavapai County only. Um, so it's in collaboration with all of the police agencies here, including Yavapai County Sheriff's Office. And the idea really is that we wanted to provide an alternative for law enforcement as they're responding to calls and finding out that there is some sort of element of mental illness, whether it's suicidal ideation or danger to others, even just you know depressed individual uh, people who are um, recovering from some sort of domestic violence situation where maybe somebody's been you know the the person's been taken off to jail and the family is left behind you know feeling like they don't know how to deal with with the emotions that come along with that we aimed to offer a service that could be accessed in the field in real time and so our mobile crisis team responds immediately to the scenes we, we aim for a 30 minute response time or less and because it's a pilot program you know we're working out some of the kinks with that sure um, but the collaboration has been really, really well received with all the law enforcement agencies and we come together on a regular basis to talk about successes and we've had a lot of them. And so as we have launched that program, we've seen more and more calls and we've now also included Verde Valley Fire and EMS. And so they're able to call us when they're on scene as well and our teams can respond in real time. So essentially it's first responders for mental health oh, wow. issues. Okay. okay. How many people staff that? Um, and we have a staff of about 10 mobile crisis responders themselves, and then we have a dispatch team that consists of master's level therapists that are dispatching and consulting with those teams in real time, 24 hours a day. And then we also partnered with Crisis Response Network, who basically manages the calls coming in from Northern Arizona. So the, the way that it works is law enforcement calls that crisis response number, they dispatch our team, so they contact our dispatcher on call who dispatches the mobile crisis teams in the area. And we set it up that way because we're familiar with the area. Our teams are familiar with how long it's going to take to get to a particular area. And we've been covering Sedona, Camp Verde, Rimrock, Cottonwood, Clarkdale, Jerome. So it's, a, as you can imagine, a vast geographic area to, to cover. Sure. Um, so we've had to strategically place staff in different areas to be able to handle that that uh, response time. So you get two-person team, real-time, able to assist with whatever's going on and take that individual essentially off of the hands of the police officer so they can get on with, you know, public safety. So they probably have a, have a pretty broad span of training in different fields of yes. mental illness and substance abuse. Yes. Essentially, yeah. I think, you know, what the problem's been for law enforcement is that they're having to respond to these situations and they have training in law enforcement and that's their area of expertise and so when they encounter these individuals with mental illness you know suicidal ideation or hearing voices or you know different situations that they have not been equipped and as as the chief alluded to earlier you know the training is it consists of a very minimal i mean right now it's getting better and better with crisis intervention training but it's still not at the level of a behavioral health professional who literally has been trained solely for you know dealing with mental health issues mm -hmm. so Okay, and then you had a really good analogy that we were talking about before we started the show, and I think we should share that with folks because I was telling you during the break that uh, when I go through the Associated Press each day, I'm seeing each page has got one or two shootings, it seems like, on there. Either a police officer was shot or someone with mental illness was shot, and it's got to be quite something to pull up on. Uh, I think YCSO, we have a story today about a man armed with some knives and doesn't know where he was or what he's doing, but... He wants suicide by cop. <sighs> to pull up on something like that, it, it just doesn't seem like you would be able to... If you pulled up on me and, and it was me, you would probably be able to reason with me and get me to calm down. But somebody who doesn't know where they are, what they're doing, it, it's not that easy. I'm not sure if we could get you to calm down, but I mean... Right, I, I get pretty be. upset sometimes. <laughs> right. But, you know, let me just address that by commenting, um, okay. uh, piggybacking on something April said, uh, and I think it... it helps understand the role of the police officer is look let's let's be honest the public expectation and quite frankly our expectation of a police officer is everything in a in the spectrum of uh, dependent on the situation they need to be a counselor on this end of the spectrum and quite frankly they need to be a soldier on this end of the spectrum when someone's exactly. armed and dangerous mm -hmm. that's a lot to expect it is, it is a, a much bigger being. job than it used to be a lot to expect out of right. one human being so right. the analogy that we talked about real briefly 
was a fire department responding to a fire that's uh, or a structure fire that's fully engulfed which is generally speaking by the time someone calls the police you know in a metaphorical um, sense the it's fully engulfed by the time the, the police are called so they get there and the nuance is that there are combustibles that are unknown inside that building and the difference being and I, and I love our public safety partners and I, I deeply respect what they do, but the difference here is our police officers cannot take a defensive position many times. They've got to intercede because there's a human element involved. And human elements are even more unpredictable than known combustibles because you, you just don't know. Mm -hmm. So right. that um, <clears throat> is essential that we have additional training, but beyond that there's, there's only so much training you can give a police officer that's expected to operate within that spectrum. And, Hence, that's where uh, April's people become so uh, so important. So yeah, this is a this is a difficult. Jackie McConnell from the Camp Ready Marshal's office mm -hmm. brought that up during uh, a recent show. She was here talking about how she has known in the past where she's actually involved in some physical altercation with a suspect, and the suspect will just stop and say, "Okay, I'm done." But then we expect police officers to just be able to, "Okay, I'm done too now." And that's that's a difficult situation. So at what point in time? Does law enforcement, and is it the individual officers that call Spectrum and say, look, we've, we've got someone we think you could really help here? How, how does that work out? And, yes. then, and then once, once there is a call and, and your experts come out in the mobile crisis unit, what takes place from that moment? Um, so the way that it occurs is that it, it can act, we can actually be activated in a number of ways, but one of the ways is that law enforcement can call in the field. You know, they, they may respond to a call and not know that there's a mental health aspect to it until they get there. So they can call right there in the field and get a, an estimated time of arrival while they're still on the phone with Crisis Response Network. So then our teams are simultaneously being activated as Crisis Response Network becomes aware that there's going to need to be a mobile team. Or they can be, the officers can inform dispatch that they would like uh, Spectrum's mobile crisis team to be activated en route because they know, in, an, and in the Verde Valley, because we're, you know, we, it's a small community and we're aware of a lot of the same people are activating these services, oftentimes that's the case. A police officer knows the individual, knows there's going to be a mental health component, and will go ahead and activate Spectrum while en route. Um, the other way is with Verde Valley Fire and EMS when they arrive on scene and, and, there's, and they're called because there might be some medical component but they get on scene and realize that there isn't and that it's more of a mental illness thing, they can call us then. So once our team arrives, what we like to see happen is, and we've trained both officers and our staff on this, is to have a warm handoff occur so that police officers can say, hey, you know, we've called this, this counselor to come out and speak with you, and then when they arrive, they can say, this is so-and-so from Spectrum Healthcare. They're gonna help get you what you need. We're gonna go ahead and go. And that usually occurs, that, that occurs most of the time. There are some situations where officers will stay on scene because there may be a concern about safety, but generally, um, officers have cleared the scene from a safety perspective, and they're feeling comfortable handing off to us. We're able to assess, and most times, community stabilize individuals in the field. So that way we can keep people in their homes and in their communities. It's the least disruptive um, approach to, to dealing with mental illness, and we can hook them into services with our outpatient facility the next day, that same night. Our counselors are able to stay on scene with an individual as long as that needs to occur. And if they do need to go to a psychiatric hospital or they need a higher level of care, we're able to do that in the field and get them directly from their homes and into that psych inpatient unit rather than taking them through the emergency department, which is costly to taxpayers, costly to the individual, and really isn't medically necessary in a lot of cases. And so the idea is to keep people in the least restrictive environment necessary to um, deal with and treat their mental health needs while also getting law enforcement off to what they're supposed to be doing, which is right. protecting public safety from crime and, and things of that nature rather than having to be mental health professionals as well on top of it. Great. Let's take our second break. Cottonwood Police Chief Steve Gazelle in studio today along with Spectrum Healthcare CEO April Razzo. This is Countywide. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, 
Todd. What are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your closet. Still no jobs? Just more stuff? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? I can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed. And they're the stuff inside your stuff. Our job is to unlock those jobs. And it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover guitar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. That's why we're here. We're free and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. Gary, financial aid forms. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Go to GetSchool.com. Welcome back to County Why. We've got about a minute and a half, two minutes left in the program, and we were talking just now that maybe, uh, to, to finish up the show, this this mobile crisis unit, which is brand new to the area, is available to, it, let's say, uh, as I mentioned off the break, if, if, if I know my wife or my son or my daughter have a mental health issue, and I can see that there's things escalating, instead of waiting it for it to get to the point where it's now out of control, and I've got to call an, a police officer in to help, I can contact you. Yes. And, and hopefully take care of this right away. That's a great question because there's a lot of resources available and I think oftentimes people don't know that they're out there, that they are available. So um, the first thing we would ask that you do is call Crisis Response Network who handles the crisis calls for the entire northern Arizona region 24-7 any time of day you speak to a real life counselor. And so that phone number is 877-756-4090. And then if during the course of that call they determine that you might benefit from somebody actually coming out to your home, even if there isn't a law enforcement component of, you know, present in the situation, they can dispatch our teams then just for community calls. And so then our teams are able to come into the home and speak to you face to face. But a lot of the time what we found with Crisis Response Network is that their counselors are able to resolve the immediate issue over the phone and then offer the individual services with Spectrum the next day because we're, we're local, we're able to cover a lot of different situations from a finance standpoint and so what we do is encourage people to just come in and see what they're eligible for and we will help get them access to the care that they need. There's a lot of different things at our disposal. As I mentioned before, we cover primary care physical health care needs all the way to behavioral health care needs including, including psychiatric needs if that's indicated. So it's better to take care of it before it gets out of control. Yes. Yeah, plain and simple, huh? We're out of time. So you got one more program for us. At least one. At least one. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to bring and in. We'll have you back, of course, yeah. other times as well. We want to bring in David Rhodes from the uh, the county jail. Okay, all righty. So there we go. Okay, April, thank you so much for coming in. Thank nice you. meeting you. If you Thanks need something, let us know. Me. Absolutely. Okay. Chief, good to see you. Good seeing you. All right, that's today's County Wide. We will talk to you again next time.